You're different. You got class. Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show and today we are taking a look at something a little different. Two stunning chronographs from a brand called Dan Henry. Now before I get into this I've got to do my wristwatch check and... I am wearing my little Timex, my little made in Great Britain Timex. I've got it on a really fun strap with a... Uh, the loop is also with a nylon loop there. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's amazing how a, a different strap can just breathe new life uh, into this piece and make it um, as fun as the first day I, I got it, to be honest. I have missed this, this little darling of a, of a piece. But anyway, today we're looking at a brand that is completely vintage inspired. So how did this come about? Well, I've got to thank Edward uh, for contacting Dan Henry and arranging this review. I will um, sort something out. I'll, I'll send you a prize, Edward. So um, thank you very much again. Who are Dan Henry? Well, Dan Henry is named after quite a prolific collector and he's drawn inspiration for the entire brand from his own experience extensive and quite um, impressive collection. So the brand is split up into, I guess you could say decades. Today we're looking at two chronographs inspired by the 30s, hence the name, the 1939. Uh, there's also a wonderful um, dress watch from the 40s, a watches from the 60s, and of course a really cool 70s automatic. Now the watch we're looking at today is inspired by probably my favorite era, uh, especially when it comes to chronographs. I have a, a big admiration for the art and design of that period, which I think is perfectly encapsulated in this watch. The watch embodies a lot of traits stylistically uh, that were very common. I mean, pretty much everyone from Omega, you name it, from the legendary Tissot Caliber 33.3, .3, for example. Uh, of course, there are elements of the Longines 13ZN. The black one in particular reminds me of the reference uh, 4974. Uh, some of you might be reminded of the Galet Multicron 45. It's really refreshing to draw inspiration, but not directly homage specific icons of horology and to make something affordable because these watches only cost a staggering $200. Now how is that possible? Well we'll get into that in just a moment. So the 1939 comes in two flavors. We have this rather striking black dial uh, with gold gilt applied numerals uh, incredible amount of um, uh, scales there. We have pulsometer, we have a telemeter, a tachymeter, and of course a 60 minute chronograph. What is quite interesting is with the two in the line, the 1939 line, you get dramatically different watches, uh, despite being essentially the same thing. There are obvious uh, differences with the color of the dial, but also subtle differences with, for example, the black dialed version comes with syringe style hands, whereas silver dial with a really fantastic texture, which we'll have a look at in just a moment. That comes with uh, blue painted kind of baton hands, I guess you could say. The silver dial has a spiral tachymeter in the center, whereas the black dial has the pulsations scale. And these were very typical complications of the day. Uh, the telemeter to, used to figure out the distance, especially between the wars and during the war, of course, or both wars, you'd start timing when you'd see the flash of the muzzle flare uh, of faraway artillery, and then um, you'd stop timing when it landed. Therefore, you could figure out the distance away from it. So let's get the basic specifications out of the way, and I'll use the silver dial. As, uh, as an example. So we'll have a look at scale first. The diameter is just a smidgen under 41. We have a thickness or height of 12 millimeters. Lug to lug is 48, and then lug width is 
22. So a very contemporary size, but it's nice that they haven't, you know, gone oversized or too big as is the trend these days. I think this is a real crowd pleaser when it comes to its scale. The case is entirely stainless steel. We do get a really nice uh, mix of brushed surfaces and then high polish on that bezel. That bezel is, is so typical of, it actually it reminds me of my little Tissot Janeiro uh, and, and it frames the, the crystal there perfectly. It's completely flat. Uh, we have a really nice kind of semi-onionized, onionized, that's not even a word, sorry, semi-onion crown with these very nice um, large pushers. We've got a nice coin edge there. And I've got to say, the, the, the polishing, the high polish, the edges, they're very, very sharp and extremely well done. And I keep having to remind myself, this is $200. What is nice is the detail extends to the back. We have a screw back case back featuring temperature, fuel consumption, pressure, and speed conversion scales. Uh, it's also done in quite a nice, um, I guess you could say pelage kind of um, concentric circle finish there. So it, it has a little bit of, um, you know, plays with the lights as well. As you can see written there, they are limited to 1,939 pieces. Pretty cool, and it makes it a little bit more exclusive. Again, something you don't typically see at watches this price. One thing they have got absolutely spot on, well, they've got a lot of things spot on, is the crystal. The crystal is a sapphire-coated, double-domed mineral glass with anti-reflective treatment. And you can see that anti-reflect, uh, there you go, you can see that, that beautiful blue tint to it. So it's a little bit more uh, scratch resistant than your regular mineral. Um, and I think it, it, it's perfect for this watch. It really is. They nailed it, absolutely nailed it on the crystal. I think with any other type of crystal, it, it just wouldn't work. The watch itself is 100 meters water resistant, which is fantastic. Uh, something unlike the vintage pieces it's inspired by, you know, you'd, <laughs> you'd be having a heart attack every time you, you, you go to wash the dishes. So you don't have to worry about these uh, whatsoever. So let's have a look at that dial, especially on the silver dial one. We have black printed numerals. None of them are cut off, which is really nice because it's something that does annoy uh, some watch enthusiasts. Uh, personally, I don't mind. The bi-compacts layout of the subdials is perfect. They also have beautiful little concentric circles that give it a sunburst effect and also help to differentiate it slightly from the main dial. It's beautifully proportioned, I, I have to say. The printing is perfect. My only criticism is the hands. Uh, obviously, they are not blued. Uh, they don't have the same luster and darkness that uh, true blued hands have. But then again, you know, this is a $200 watch. It'd be quite expensive to do. It takes a higher degree of skill and cost and labor costs, especially to have hands blued. Um, so I don't expect it. Although I, I got to say the paint is done very well. It's hardly noticeable. The only, the only time you notice it is when you look at it at an angle, you sometimes see the edges, but look, this, no, nobody's gonna be looking this close to your watch. Let's have a quick look at the black dial version. This, I've got to say, is my favorite. I love the striking colors here. Something also you, you'll miss out on vintage pieces as dials naturally fade and patina. Don't get me wrong, I love that. I, I adore that, but it's cool to have it from new. You know, when I first looked at this, um, it reminded me of, re you know, redialed watches, but even a redialed watch is, is not done with such sharpness and um, clarity and precision as these dials are. I adore the use of colors. Uh, the vivid red, the rich gold tones, the glossy black contrasted wonderfully by the ivory in the pulsation scale. I'm not fond of the hands this time here because they've gone for the hour and minute. Although the size is spot on, um, they are not uh, gilded like the second hand there. Uh, a little bit of a shame. Again, the, the subdials are positioned in the same place with those beautiful concentric circle patterns that just capture the light exquisitely. And look at the glossy section. Each scale is like a frame. It's got a wonderful sense of balance and draws you into the center. It's almost like a dartboard. And then you have these little applied dots on the in-between hours. Very, very cool indeed. So the pushers are as you'd expect. We have stop start at the top and then reset at the bottom. 
if we engage the chronograph there, you see it does have a almost a sweet to it. Inside we have the Miota 6S21, which of course is a quartz movement. It has a rather impressive battery life of four years, uh, and it, that is including if you run the chronograph for 60 minutes a day. So quite impressive. The accuracy is plus 20 seconds a month. It's the typical automatic uh, quartz crisis causing accuracy you'd come to expect. We have the seconds for the main time here on the right. Now if I stop it and reset, it has a quite nice sweep to its reset. If I pull out the crown all the way you can see it's hackable. Both watches come on black uh, Italian leather straps with a very nice pattern to them. They're quite substantial, um, they're not super high-end but I got to, to say for an affordable watch they're decent quality, certainly better than entry-level Seiko's. Um, they have made some effort here and they're stitched at the sides with black stitching, which is nice because I think having a, you know, a brighter stitching at the side would have taken too much attention away from, from the main attraction, which of course is that dial. They also come with uh, what I refer to as bolt-action spring bars, uh, which is really nice because it just makes changing straps on these an absolute pleasure and a doddle and it's something you're gonna do because these i would imagine are really gonna be fun you know popping this on the collar rib or a beautiful hirsch or uh, something you know crocodile genuine crocodile strap it would look a million dollars the buckle is your standard affair just signed dh there and it's brushed so let's pop it on the wrist and see how it wears so here we go and as you can see it has a really nice presence to it. it it's quite captivating, draws attention in. Uh, it's very legible considering it's quite a busy dial. It's a little bit on the large side for me. Uh, however, I've got to say for most people, because you guys know I have tiny wrists, for most people, uh, the 40, almost 41 millimeter size is going to be a crowd pleaser. It's also got really nice, almost kind of tear shaped uh, lugs that angle downwards very nicely so it really sits on the wrist beautifully it's very comfortable the weight is only 57 grams because of course you haven't got um, a bracelet or the extra weight of a mechanical movement um, so it's very light and comfortable i have a feeling actually as a dress watch it would serve Perfectly, I know, you know, it's, it's overly complicated for a dress watch. Traditionally, you want something a bit more simple, but I think that vintage charm comes over so well. Uh, they managed to capture the, the, you know, the appeal, the, the look um, perfectly. So I think as a dress watch, it would, it would do marvelously. So let's summarize the watch. Well, undoubtedly, I think it's great value for money. Uh, the quality is extremely impressive for what you get. The fact that it's designed by an enthusiast uh, with a lot of thought and attention to detail, you can tell uh, it's blatantly obvious, well thought out, all the elements of there, the person who's put this together really knows about their watches. The strongest attraction of these watches, especially chronographs like the ones I mentioned, you know, the, the, the legendary Longines or the Galets, the, you know, the Tissots, even the Amigas, that, that this is so clearly inspired by, they are expensive. Also, you have the risk because they are, well, uh, 70 plus years old. They're gonna be expensive to maintain. They're gonna be fragile. You can buy this for $200 and not have to think or worry about it ever again. And I think that is a really strong value proposition. The fact also that they're in limited amounts or limited editions makes them a little bit more special. Although, yes, it is at the end of the day, just a quartz chronograph, but it's a quartz chronograph done with love you know it, you, you feel it it's it's an interesting watch and I think it's a logical progression it was about time that somebody made a, a watch brand like this I mean I'm kind of mad I, I didn't come up with the idea myself and the main benefit about basing your watches on historic classic timepieces is that they are and forgive the pun they're going to be timeless they're going to look as good now as they do another 70 years from now also you have the reliability the accuracy ruggedness of a quartz movement okay so what are the cons well on both watches I had a little bit of an issue 
with the hands. I'm not a fan of faux blue hands, but I understand they've got to keep costs down. Having said that, they're done very well. I'm not sure why they didn't go for the, you know, the full gold tone hands on the hour and uh, minute on the black dial. It's a little bit of a shame, but you know, not the end of the world. Normally I complain about the size. This time, however, I think they got the size spot on. A few people are gonna say, oh, it's even 40 millimeters is too small. Well, I think if it was any larger, it would be a bit too obvious that it's not vintage. It's already a little bit too big compared to its vintage ancestors, shall we say. Even an Eberhard oversized chrono from the fifth, uh, 1930s is 40 millimeters. I mean, there are exceptions like the um, Universal Geneve that we talked about the other day. So I think the size, I'm not gonna complain about the size. It does lack obviously the historicity of a genuine vintage movement. But as we said, there are obvious pluses to that. Uh, my only slight criticism, and again, you can't really blame it for being, you know, just a smidgen over 200 bucks. The quartz leaves me a little bit cold doesn't have the magic, obviously, of a mechanical movement. But then again, trying to find a mechanical, you know, a manual wind chronograph at this price is almost next to impossible. As I said, you have the problems of having to maintain, repair, uh, and run a very complex mechanical watch. Another negative for me, uh, and probably this is just me, and I've noticed this in a lot with more modern watches, the lug width I feel is too big. It overpowers the delicate kind of nature of the watch, in my opinion. I would have loved this to be 20 millimeters, but again, you know, I'm really nitpicking here. Finally, I have to address a few QC issues. Uh, there was a little bit of dust underneath uh, this, the black dialed version. Um, you'll probably spot it in a few of the macro shots. Not a big thing. Um, again, you know, 200 bucks, certainly better quality than, than entry level Seikos, uh, without a doubt. And that kind of leads to the question, where are these made? Well, something I do respect about the Dan Henry brand is they've been very, very honest and open. They are made in China, they're made in Hong Kong, but they make a point of stressing that they are made in a high-end factory in Hong Kong. There's a, a big stigma with things being made in China that we usually associate it with you know, counterfeit goods or uh, low quality items. This is different I, um, and you can tell the finishing is exquisite i mean it really is impressive to be honest and i i don't care if it gets me a little bit of flack it compares the quality compares to some swiss pieces that i've seen also i think i should mention that the watch comes with a canvas uh, watch roll with an extra uh, military grade NATO, which is um, extremely uh, well made, which I was very impressed by. What I especially love and appreciate about chronographs of this particular era is that they were not only functional, uh, but yet they were very elegant and emblematic of that entire era. They're also a conversation starter. I like the fact that it's different, you know, it's not your typical quartz watch. If you are a watch enthusiast, you'd, you'd appreciate, but you don't want the risk of possibly uh, spending thousands and it ending up being a, a, a you know Franken watch or the obvious dangers of buying vintage. This, you don't have any of that risk. I'm quite happy that a brand like Dan Henry exists. They're very tastefully done. You get your money's worth. Absolute pure class. I'm, I'm really impressed with this. You know, a few negatives, a few little, uh, but again, guys, it's $200. What can you say? You guys know full well what, what um, you know, horrific watches there are for the same money out there. So really relieved that there is something more that I can recommend. Um, so if you're just starting out watch collecting or you're a seasoned enthusiast, you'd be able to appreciate. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.